Hello, I'm Ronnie Eldridge, and welcome to Eldridge and Company, a half hour of conversation. As I was leaving the house this morning, and I looked at Jimmy, that's Jimmy Breslin, my husband, and asked him where he was going, he said to the publisher, why else would I have on a shirt and tie? So I said, I'll give you another reason, come and do the show. And since he always does what I say, uh, he's here. Hello. Listen, how are you? I haven't okay. seen you in about a half hour. Right. So uh, what, was your com what was our conversation this morning? Not much because you were running to get here and I was too dopey to start talking That's about it. last night, with, which you missed. I mean, you were outside. We were in the f on Bushwick Avenue at a funeral parlor, Barenquin, and I was inside, and I didn't come out and tell you after it what was uh, Eddie, a fellow 40 years old, Molino, in the casket. He had on a stocking cap with the New York Yankees logo. That's, and the family around, he had five kids, that's all, and a brother and a mother. And a, and, and uh, they're all standing around, and the problem was they didn't have the, f uh, the money to take care of the funeral. You got to put the body in the ground. It's thirteen hundred dollars just to open a grave. They were talking, and then uh, they uh, had two insurance policies, and neither of them paid. That's something we ought to talk about. What kind of insurance policy? At the, it, uh, phony. Let me just explain that we were in Brooklyn, and I was in the car because yeah. I was a driver last yeah, night. I, I wasn't a partner. Mm. Um, Jimmy mm. doesn't. You don't drive. No. You've never driven in your life. No. And so when you want to go anyplace, no. I have to assume that role. A few times. A few times. That, that you do. All oh, right. Because I used to do it more you. often, yeah. but since I started to go back to work. Yeah. Um, what, what were the insurance policies? What was this guy doing? The mother wrote, uh, saw something on the television, an insurance company from Phoenix, uh, from Syracuse, and she wrote away and she got a $5,000 policy. So the guy is at Rikers Island, the, uh, the fellow with the five kids that died. He's 41 years old. He was stealing change out of a car, out of parked cars, trying to bring it home, I guess. At any rate, he went away for eight months, and he's there a month, and he gets sick, and they move him into Elmhurst, which is the prison ward there, as you know, is for women, huh? I don't know. I, that's yep. what you said, yeah. I'm telling you. So. All right, okay. Don't ask. I'm telling you because they told okay. me. Okay, all right. And the other one is, <laughs> so they put him in a Bellevue and he died. Well, how, uh, it how was two weeks before, uh, he had to live two weeks more to validate the policy. Uh, and he did, he died just it, short of the How much time. did the $5,000 policy cost a month? Do you know? I don't know. I didn't ask. And where did they get the money? And what was I the five thousand? What was the $5,000 for? Was it, oh, uh, it was to pay for the burial? For that. That's, that's what got, the concern is. Everybody has that on his mind. I'll show you that. that uh, these are Hispanics from Bushwick, but I mean, you don't do any college. That's all he's got in his mind. Does he have money to pay for the funeral when he goes? That's all. You know, it's people so, I know. Yeah, okay. it's so interesting. It's weddings mm. and funerals that everybody mm. spends a lot of money oh, on. Yeah. They go book sit down weddings. They right. call it sit down with long dresses and a lot uh, of money, and, right? And, and, um, mm. You once said that uh, you didn't pay too much attention to these uh, television uh, religions. No. Why? Because they don't have a cemetery. <laughs> and that the true you power know. lies with the religious forces that have the Absolutely. cemetery. Absolutely. Yeah. You name it. Right. Jewish faith has got a lot of cemeteries everywhere. Lutheran cemetery, big. Uh, the uh, Catholics, big. Is, uh, do you see the 707 Club or whatever it's called? Has Jerry Falwell got any? Uh... No, I don't think so. No. Well, I don't even know where he is anymore. No, they don't have I any. hate cemeteries, and therefore yeah. um, mm. people close to me who die, and I don't know what I'll do. I won't say this anyway, but people close to me who die get cremated and land up in a decorated box in my closet, mm -hmm. and I want them to be with me, and my children are going to have to inherit the... The, the ancestral line. I think that would be a great collection. Why would you, if somebody wants to be cremated, which the people in my family want, mm. why would you put them in the ground? I think putting people in the ground is a horrible thing. It's also mm. environmentally mm. unsound, it seems to me. So you anyway. Could, you could put them in a high-rise building, stick them up uh, like it's a storage. Uh, but they charge more for eye level. I know this from experience, because yeah. I once had someone cremated and had yeah. very little money. Yeah. Eye level is like yeah. 2,500, yeah. or maybe it's 5,000 yeah. nowadays. Yeah. Up a little bit mm. is 2,000. Mm -hmm. Up in the sky, 
a thousand. Mm -hmm. And when you start bargaining about where somebody's going to be, so you can go and look at somebody, you realize how ridiculous this whole institution and thing is. I ever tell you about the guy who worked at the Santa Anita racetrack for Fred Perna? He had a job selling cemetery plots. I never told you that. Yes, no. I did. You don't, you don't pay attention. I to may what not I'm have listened. What? He used to <laughs> say he'd get a couple, and uh, he'd say, "Look, you got a Pacific Ocean view." You know, and she'd say, the wife would say, am I going to be able to see the ocean, too, with my husband? And he said, absolutely, as long as you have those plots next to each other. Yeah, well, that's a nice thought for the people who were left behind, sure. and still alive. Well, you know, the thing in, in Cypress Hills we talked about, we, you went there with me, where yeah. they, they buried on top of the garbage. Right, right. Cypress Hill and the cemetery. other cemetery where they, what was that all about? Where wow. they, t where the gravestones all decayed? They decayed, yeah. They, you couldn't even tell if it was a grave, if it was a right. cemetery anymore. It was just a lawn. They, they'd been there so long they crumbled and they were gone, yeah. Um, let's the, talk one in, the one in the Cypress Hills you forget, so you don't pay attention to me. Let's I told you. There was a guy had his brother buried in the debris, and they were going to move him to a better cemetery. And he said no, because his brother could see from the hill and that the garbage was built on the hill, he could see Manhattan. I very was very important. careful when I introduced the program to say this is a half hour of conversation. Yeah. It's not a monologue. No. It's not an opportunity no. for a monologue. No. All right, now let's change the subject. Let's talk. <laughs> yeah, but I love sure cemeteries. Go ahead, <laughs> bye. Well, let's talk about um, potential deaths. I mean, let's talk about the world. Why? What's happening in the world today? What are we talking about invading Iraq? and? Well, that's why I, gave, I, I want to see on the television. I gave an idea. It's good. Get all the old Hitler films. Get Hitler. Don't get anybody else, huh? Yeah. Which you don't like to look at. Whenever they have anything World War II on television, you turn it off. Well, you, you also, at the same time, always tell me, stop looking at the past. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> but this would be good because he did show he wondered how you proclaim that you're taking your country into a war. I must have the Sudetenland, I must have uh, Czechoslovakia, I must have this, they're finally into Poland, they go. And people follow. Oh, yeah. Last See? week I had, last week Norman Siegel was a guest, mm -hmm. and he was talking about how when you look back, you know, we allowed mm -hmm. the Japanese to be interred, mm -hmm. we, we did all these different mm -hmm. things, different movements where mm -hmm. voices were not heard objecting. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a, it was very interesting, and mm -hmm. uh, now you're saying Hitler, of course, was an example of people not objecting, mm -hmm. right? They just mm -hmm. went along. Well, they're not objecting now. And now they're not objecting either. They didn't object to the Vietnam War. Right. Why, mm -hmm. why is that, do you think? The sheep. I mean, I Who is they? The people that nobody, there was no protest in the Vietnam War when it started. None whatsoever. Well, we backed into it, but there was certainly a lot of protests, but they weren't protests by the people who had the power to do something. No. And then when the war, then when the draft ended, when the draft of college students ended, the anti-war movement was gone. Who was it that we saw on television the other night who said that uh, action in Iraq would not uh, um, have a draft, and you said, uh, you yeah, know what till, you said, till somebody Rumsfeld, needs, yeah, and well, his testimony. That yeah. was really interesting that he yeah. felt he compelled to say that. Yeah. Uh, why? I mean, is that the only thing that really then engenders he, public interest? Well, that would start a rebellion. It would start a rebellion the way it, the Vietnam War, you don't go in a bar, so you never saw it. It would be split right down the middle of the saloon. I'd like to add that you don't go into bars no, anymore I, I either. In them. Guys with daughters were all for the war. Guys with sons were very hesitant to be screaming, let's go. It comes down to who could lose. And where were the mothers? I think they the, didn't have anything to say. They kept it. They were stupid. They kept their mouths shut. During Vietnam, yeah. they did say, speak up. When? It was the mothers. It was the women yeah. in the peace movement. It was the women strike for peace. Yeah. It was yeah. another mother for peace. Yeah. They were very yeah. vocal, and uh, I think very important. Although I know you say that you think all the anti-Vietnam protests and everything were futile. Why do you yeah. say that? Because the only way that war got ended was when the Vietnam, North Vietnamese came out of the bushes and the bull rushes and, and took over the cities, Saigon, Way, Da Nang. They just came out. They won. That's the way it happened. They won. And all the screaming and gnashing and teeth over here didn't do any good at all. That's why I'm sorry. I, I'm for them emotionally, 
But when you look at it, it's a joke. It never worked. What do you think of all the emergency measures that are now being taken to combat terrorism? What do you think of well, the, the war on terrorism? Well, what do you think? The Never war we have in, that well, we refer think? to Afghanistan as a war. <laughs> We're referring to everything as a war. Mm -hmm. But as yet, we haven't got a formal war, mm -hmm. right? No. I yeah. think um, I'm, more, uh, I'm less judicious about this than... Well, so let's go back to Norman Siegel and his interview. Mm -hmm. I'm less, much less judicious about this than he is. Um, I, I think that we're overreacting incredibly. Mm -hmm. I, I have very, I have no trust in the president, mm -hmm. Donald Rumsfeld, mm -hmm. in that crowd. Mm -hmm. I'm increasingly having uh, less good feelings about Powell. Uh, I think that this is very political. I think there is a danger. I think we're going to live with this danger for the rest of our lives because the world is changing. Mm -hmm. um, I think, of course, it comes down to religion and what beliefs are, and we should talk about Why that a little bit. Us? But I don't. Th I think we have to be very careful about our freedoms and liberties in the face of okay. this new well, kind of warfare. That's, that's very true. But let me go beyond that. Why is it that they hate us? That. It's a f it, I, who who is, is they? It Let's discuss it. Is well, it all quite, Muslims? No. no it's no. the terrorists who are there. They're renegade people. They're people who oh, believe not so in much, anarchy. I'm, I'm, I'm not so much in love with just saying it's a few. It's I'm not a saying it's a few, but I'm not few. saying it's all Muslims. It's not. No. no. Just when I was a child and I was, um, which you deny, uh, I was um, subjected to anti-Semitism from... From whom? <laughs> From <laughs> Irish Catholic kids who <laughs> lived on the you other side of Broadway. Yeah. You, may, you tell me I make it up. Well, yes. I didn't make it up, but I didn't never said that all Catholics were anti-Semitic. I did not. When I, and I married around, a Catholic. I did not. Um, and I don't believe it. Uh, yeah. uh, but, and I don't believe that all Muslims are anti-Jews, yeah. yeah. Catholics, yeah. Christians, whatever, yeah. or Americans. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but I do believe that uh, we have some t we've we've had terrorism for years in different forms. We've just had more sophisticated weapons and more daring people, and mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. and it coincides with the belief that there is something greater than life. When I was in mm -hmm. seventh grade, we had to memorize a poem mm -hmm. by I think he must have been the superintendent of the schools, Elias Lieberman. It was I believe, and I only remember the first line. I believe there are greater things in life than life itself. And that was many no. years ago. I mean, more yeah. than 50 years ago. Yeah. He thought so? I'm still trying to understand that sense. Well, the only thing on the hatred, I can't, I just, it's so intense. And you don't quite know why, and nobody really has examined this. Nobody's had an open discussion in this country, why do they hate us? You gotta, there, there, there's got to be some good reasons. Nobody wants to touch that. Uh, but there's some things go on that, I mean, just in my own tiny little memories in the world in which we're living. Here, there's a movie out now, Four Feathers. It's about shooting Arabs, beating I've up Arabs. I've seen some right? of the, I've seen well, some. Well, that, that movie was back when I was in the Jerome Theater on 101st Avenue uh, 2,000 years ago. Four Feathers, go after the Arabs. Well, then that was, was always a, mysterious. Don't you remember the alleys yep. and the and Casablanca? Yeah. Even it was mysterious. Yeah, or that at least Morocco. Had a thrill to it. The rest of them were plain animals, and we went yeah. after them. The the right. worst Arab I saw a villain was Basil Rathbone. <laughs> they put a sheet on right. him, and he was evil. And Native Americans. Yeah, but, but in this case, and the role a, that blacks yeah, but, were. But it's how the they were Arabs portrayed. that are hitting the hit, like World Trade Center, hitting back at us, and all our. Films, if you look back, if, if the f movies are the American culture, which they are, then uh, rather than books, plays, operas, or anything else, films is the culture of the United States, uh, it's all been against the Arabs. Shoot them, blow them up, do everything. Maybe they see some of them too, and they get a little riled. I don't know. It certainly adds to our distrust of them, at least distrust, probably bordering on plain hate. Well, in our ignorance, I mean, as mm. a country, we, mm. the, the CIA and the FBI mm. can't even understand the languages mm. that are spoken. It's, it's a little uh, ridiculous that we are so oblivious Ta to Tara so much the Tara lives downstairs from us, right? Yeah. Did she call yesterday? Yeah. What did she say? She said she needs a letter of recommendation. Yeah. This is 13 months later. 
Explain who Tara is. She's uh, a woman in the uh, building where we live who was from Iran. She went to the University of Tehran. I assume she speaks the language, Farsi. She does speak Farsi. No, so does she. I <laughs> assume <laughs> she's speaking it. She has a husband who's an assistant district attorney in Manhattan County, uh, privy to information. He's a trusted servant of the public. And uh, she, there came the thing on the television right after the World Trade Center, the FBI, whose agents barely know the English language, if you listen to them, between you and I's. Uh, they, they, uh, You're not but, saying between you and I to me. You're saying no, that no, they say they between say, you and I instead uh, of between you and me, right? Yeah, and they say a lot of And they lie. Now, then she, they wanted people who could speak Arabic or Farsi or anything. They were desperate. They don't have anybody. So she, I said to her, go, but Tara, go volunteer. Be good. She said she was going to run anyway without talking to me. Yeah. She went down there, and they said they'd call her back, and then they... They wanted a, what do you call it, a, a security clearance, which my letter was part of it now. This is 13 months later with a husband who's a known man in law enforcement. And then they gave her a test in, in the language. It was done by a Middle Eastern professor from like Texas, El Paso. And he had language in it that nobody had ever seen. And she didn't throw the test aside. She didn't want to get involved with it. Finally, they had to come back to her and back to her. Now... She might, if my letter makes it, she might 13 months later be prepared to do some translating, which she could have done the first it's morning. It's so ridiculous. Yes, it is. Very ridiculous. That's and if there's murders, I'll oh, not stop on my line. But if we have a murder out of somebody, uh, somebody in Brooklyn kills two people or three people, we have detectives go to that house. We comb his family background. We know everything about this fellow, everything there is to know. And it's all, and it comes in the public prints. We investigate homicides. Not one law enforcement person from this country or military person has gone into those Saudi Arabian neighborhoods and see where these guys come from, or into Cairo where that Adder who flew into the uh, first uh, tower. Where do they come from? Who are they? Who are their relatives? If they Nothing. Come, if they come because from, we can't speak the language to go and knock on the door. If, if they come from Saudi Arabian mm. neighborhoods, mm. then why are we talking about attacking Iraq? Because that's uh, Hussein goes on the television and makes you hate him. I mean, he's got some way to upset people. I mean, he, he's really lousy, but he, he's, he's smart enough to know how to drive you crazy. He you gets will, that smug look, then he holds a sword. I mean, the man yeah. is, you know, to drive you nuts. Since you were on the program last time, we've, um, we've started spending a lot of time with the Catholic Church. Hmm. And... Um, we went to the conference because you're writing a book mm. about the yep. what the current situation in the Catholic Church. Yeah, my personal view on the on the betrayal of the uh, I feel betrayed by the Catholic Church. So does everybody else I know. And you've stopped going to church on Sunday mornings. Well, yeah, I stopped picking up the collection. That's the thing that I was doing. When I figured it out that it's going to go to Mike Dowd's pocket in a settlement of a million five on a sexual assault so Mike, the, let me just interject. Mike Dowd is a lawyer who's, def yeah. who's representing somebody yeah. who's Couple. suing. Yeah. And his first suit was a million five. You know that. What am I telling you that for? I am, um, but I've gotten very engrossed and involved because I followed you to Texas to the Bishop's Conference, uh, up to Boston. I didn't follow you. I went yeah. with you uh, to Boston uh, to the organizing yeah. meeting of the Voice of the Faithful, yeah. which is a group that started outside in Belmont, Massachusetts? In uh, Wellesley. In Belmont Wellesley. is the John Birch Society. Oh, I'm Get sorry. Yeah, I will. Uh, in Wellesley, they were really, they're important members yeah. of, of a parish, of mm -hmm. parishes that mm -hmm. have said, like you, they don't want their money to go to Cardinal Law and, and, and to the Pope. I don't want to put any money there. But I've spent a lot of time with the women who yeah. are in these groups. Yeah. At, at the conference, the bishop's conference, mm -hmm. you couldn't really get into that bishop's mm -hmm. conference. So you could watch it on television or you could stand across the street from the hotel. But you could go to another hotel where all the people who were there supporting, mm -hmm. um, right. what? What are they supporting? They're supporting a, a change in the, in the yeah. structure of the and, Catholic Church. Uh, most of the change. The uh, women are the most women. engrossing. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me that the women have really the most mm -hmm. to complain about. Mm -hmm. These are very, women who 
deeply mm -hmm. believe in the teachings of Christ mm -hmm. and who have dedicated them, their lives to it and who can't become mm -hmm. clergy. Is yeah. that the proper word? Yeah. It's, um, not. it's not. And I'm who, not going to fight over that. No, There's but, nothing to fight about. But it's interesting mm -hmm. because it really wasn't until men started talking about priests sexually abusing them mm -hmm. that the questioning really started. Mm -hmm. I mean, there have been stories for years about nuns being abused. There have been stories for years about nuns but not being able to become priests. It never really moved anybody, that many people. Mm -hmm. But the stories of sexual crimes against men is finally the thing that did it. Yep, because uh, there's been a large number of cases which haven't uh, received much attention of women being abused, and this young women, by, by these priests. And every time one does come up that it's a woman, as you know, everybody breathes a sigh, relief, uh, because that really doesn't count. It's, God forbid, it should be another 13-year-old boy. That's the game. But, it, the, but this whole, whole movement isn't just about the sexual no, offenses, no, is it? No, it's, no, it's about right the structure of well, the Roman Catholic well, Church. How can, you have a, how can you have any movement to do with anything Outside of outside of pro football or something, in which you got a hundred percent men, it's crazy. This is a they have a religion, and it's uh, all men walking around. When I was in Rome, well, you saw them in uh, in uh, Dallas. They're all fat, you know, the bishops. You ever see people with bellies like that for roast beef? They look like. I think there was something once. Yeah, where? Well, anyway, <laughs> don't interrupt my absolute looks. <laughs> But in Rome, they walk around old men with white hair in dresses, black dresses, and they, they, uh, they make pronouncements for the whole world, and they don't know what the hell they're talking about. They, they, they have no contact with men. I've read some things by the fellow who runs the, really runs the Rome, the church in Rome, Ratzinger. He's a German uh, Gestapo, we call him, uh, cardinal. Uh, he grew up in Germany, and his uh, position on women is abominable. Hates them. So does the Pope hate them. I mean, it shows that everything they do. And if you had women running the show here, one thing, you wouldn't have a lot of abuse. The, the, the pedophiles would be down. The women, would, the women would be much better at it than these men. Men don't know anything. And they then, really don't. And the fact that priests are not married and celibate. Yeah. That's crazy. Why is that? I don't know. Oh, but that, Genesis came from land. Real estate. Real estate. See, they had these guys, uh, these chief monks, owned, uh, owned a lot of property, owned huge lands, and they had families. And when they died, they left the, the lands to uh, the families. Some of them are now the richest people in Europe still. So they passed a law that you couldn't be married and that all land upon your death reverted to Rome. And they, they wanted the land, and they got it. And that's how they put in this thing. And then they said it shows you don't have your life uh, shared with uh, some woman. You, all your attention is on God, is on Christ, so you celebrate. This is very I think it's nuts, you know. Yeah, this is very personal, but I mean, you've Much been, you, you go to church, yep. you are very yep. Catholic, you believe. Yep. Yep very much yeah. in your religion. You believe yeah. well, in the well, hereafter. Well, yeah. uh, you believe in sin. You believe yeah. in trying hard to help people. Mm. But you, you've you spent a lifetime, I don't want to say how many years, um, allowing a priest to mm. give marital advice, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. allowing the church to give advice on birth yep. control yep. And, and women's bodies. Mm -hmm. How do you reconcile those two things, those three things, those with, things? With anger. Peter King, I'll explain to people, he's a congressman from Long Island. We were talking on the phone, and then David Burke, who was in politics a long time, the same thing, said what they did, these people, to wreck the early years of a marriage by a lot of phony rules, uh, admonishments, stern looks, ran and, and, and used it always the... Uh, uh, the collar as a, uh, it's like a baseball bat. No, we, we paid attention to them. All the more reason, the fury now at the betrayal. 
I mean, uh, I mean, David Burke is still talking about the, the had to run on around with a thermometer. When, I mean, what is this? What, 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 are, what are we, in a test situation or are we married? They still have the, the, the Cana rules, they call them. I got a hold of them from the Diocese of Brooklyn, still today now. I wouldn't even show them to you. Five and a <laughs> half pages on behavior and proper behavior of young couples in a marriage. It's sick. And the guy that's putting it out, the, the guys putting it out, at least two of them I know are gay and don't know anything about marriages. Um, that's do, all. <laughs> you, what? Well, <laughs> Should we go on a gay hunt? I mean, no. Do, no, all right. That's so ridiculous. What do yeah. you, you know uh, that? And, yes. and, and for a while it looked as if uh, that was going to be the focus of the church's uh, search. No. It was going to go after gay priests. Yeah rather than talking no. about the structure of it. Yeah, and we don't want that to no, happen. Do we it. just have a, a few, mm. about a minute. Yeah. Um, right. So how do you feel about the world today? Well, I'm up. Right. What about the economy? I mean, here we're talking about the war. Yeah. And it seemed to me that Greenspan the other day, where somebody, the, the Congress said $300 million to $400 million to $1 billion to fight a war in Iraq. Greenspan says we have to cut back on government spending and we're talking about war. Hmm. Uh, who tells the truth and what's happening? I'm watching the television Sunday, which I very rarely do on the Sunday morning shows. I can't handle them. But this fellow, Will, this little twerp on the seven, channel seven in the morning, he said we're in the mildest recession we've had. Mild recession? Well, I mean, why don't is he come over to Brooklyn and take a walk where people haven't had a job for a year, some of them? Is that mild? I'm out of work a year with, a, with three kids, and you're telling me it's a mild recession. People are buying the, the house I live in, and the rent is $600 today. They're going to make it 1200 tomorrow. That's a mild recession. You were in housing court the other day, and you yeah. watched this happen. Yeah. You came home, and you had to go to bed. Yeah, it's That's terrible. what happens every time you go to see some of these things in the city. You just yeah. come home. Well, the hallway was filled with kids, and they're all going to be thrown out of their houses. And they all knew the word eviction. They're living with that in the conversation in the house. Okay, Jimmy, it's mm. time to go to work. I thank you very much yeah. for coming. Yeah. And, what are you uh, going to do in return? Don't I get a cup of coffee? Or I'm going to drive you someplace. Oh, you um, <laughs> so you guys can see that my life is interesting at home and that we have very lively discussions, and actually, we enjoy them very much.